Tonight, Florence is here. It's raining like crazy and people are nervous. We have live coverage from Yadkin County in Greensboro as well as along the Carolina coast. Heavy rain still falling tonight, creating scenes like this. This is literally right outside of our studio. A car stuck in floodwaters on University Parkway and Coliseum Drive in Winston-Salem. Ironically enough, just a few hundred yards from the largest shelter in the state at the Joel Coliseum. Winston-Salem Police Department says the road is flooded. You were advised not to drive through any standing water, not just here, because you don't know how deep it is or what is hiding in the water. And Lainey, this water is not going anywhere anytime soon, is it? Now, you know what? The problem is it's falling so quickly that it can't absorb, and so we're having the runoff and we're having the flash flooding across our area. Every county in our area is under a flash flood warning right now and we're not out of the woods yet even though that area of rain is lifting northward across our region you can see the number of reports just over the last 24 hours these are either flood reports or trees down or lines down different things like that all across the area and yes they are in our region as well we're starting to get reports of flooding down to the south davidson randolph county davie county up into the mountains we've had trees knocked down as well across the region taking a look at the radar right now some of those heavy rain bands are still continuing to move northward through our area. Some of the highest totals have been over Randolph and Davidson County, where in the yellow you're looking at four or five inches. You get down into that magenta color, you're closer to nine, ten inches of rain. In this area of green here, you're looking at an average of two to as much as four inches. In the area in blue, you've already seen about one to three inches of rain. We'll be adding to that as flash flooding threat stays up. River flooding threat goes up. The damaging wind threat is going to come down. We cannot rule out still an isolated tornado. Thankfully, we are not under a tornado watch right now. That is just to our south. Haven't had any active tornado warnings. We do have a window for that tonight and even into tomorrow. Wind advisory is going to stay up through at least midnight. These are the flash flood warnings that cover our entire area. And then these are river flood warnings for the Dan, for the Yadkin in two different places. Also for the new River all anticipating major flooding, all because of too much rain that is moving into our area. So the heavy rain is now through early overnight. Flash flooding will continue. Again, there's that potential for river flooding and mountain mudslides. We'll talk about our severe storm threat a little bit more in detail coming up, so stay with us. Lenny, thank you. Some schools will be reopening tomorrow for the first time since Florence made landfall early Friday morning at the coast. There are also many closures, including in Davidson, Randolph and Yadkin counties. Many others, including Guilford and Winston-Salem Forsyth, Forsyth at this hour, are on a two hour delay. Alamance Burlington schools will be back on time tomorrow. We have a full list of closures and delays at the bottom of your screen, and you can also find them online at WXII12.com. The Yadkin River is expected to crest in Jonesville at 26 and a half feet tomorrow thanks to rain brought on by Florence, but there was not a mandatory evacuation. People there being warned to keep an eye on the conditions and make their own decisions. Chris Lee live in Yadkinville tonight as people everywhere prepare. Chris. Yeah, I'm at the Yadkin County Rescue Squad Center here in Yadkinville, and uh, there's crews here on standby just in case. There's a couple times that these trucks have gone in and out to get people who've been on the highway. But I spoke to Kevin Austin earlier, who's the chairman of uh, the Yadkin County Board of Commissioners, and he was just saying earlier that folks in Jonesville are encouraged to, eva to evacuate, that it is not mandatory, but to watch those levels, that this, level, this could be cresting overnight and into the morning, and so to watch those. If that were the case for you to evacuate, then shelter will be open in Yakin County if they are needed. There are three locations that they have available for that. He was saying that hundreds of, shell of, of structures could potentially be damaged due to this flooding in the Jonesville area. So just watch and be cautious of what's happening in your area if you're close to the river or in low-lying areas. I'll keep you guys updated here. Where for right now in Yakinville, I'm Chris Lee, WXI 12 News. Thank you, Chris. In Winston-Salem, the 2100 block of Renolda is blocked by this tree in the middle of the road right now. Renolda Road, Sports Director Brian Formica spotted it before the police department even arrived. No word on when this section of Winston-Salem will reopen. Continuing our coverage in the triad, several counties, including Guilford, as Laney mentioned, under a flash flood watch until tomorrow morning. Let's go to Steve King. He is live tonight in Greensboro. Steve, what are you hearing from city leaders? Well, city leaders just want everyone to know that we have a lot of rain ahead of us. And like Laney just said, we're not out of the woods just yet. Let's take a look at the rain as you see here as it's just been continuing to fall, not just here in Greensboro and Guilford County, but 
like you, we've been saying across the entire Piedmont Triad right now. Now, with all of this rain expected tonight and into tomorrow and some flooding already on some roads, there are no road closures, but emergency officials just want to remind everybody never try to drive through water. Mayor Nancy Vaughn's echoing that same message as well. If you can't see street markings on the road you're driving on, don't try to drive through it. Find another way. Like we talked about, you don't know how deep it is or if there are any obstructions in the roadway that are going to make it very dangerous. So the best thing to do is for everybody just to stay inside. Drivers should try to avoid being out on the roads. If you are on the roads, just make sure that you are being as careful as possible. I was driving on I-40 um, east earlier and by the Four Seasons Mall, I saw a few traffic lights out as well next to the interstate. So that's something that drivers need to be mindful of if you are out on the roads. Now, right now there are about 1,000 customers without power across Guilford County right now. Some trees and some power lines came down in High Point and in Greensboro. The most important thing is that nobody was hurt. Myself and photojournalist Daniel Cruz are actually here at Fire Station 48 right now trying to stay safe, which is what everybody should be focusing on right now across Guilford County. And Guilford County Schools, we should mention, that is on a two-hour delay tomorrow. Reporting live from Greensboro, Steve King, WXII 12 News. Steve, thank you very much. The governor, Roy Cooper, was, was scheduled to be in New Bern tomorrow to see some of the damage. Today, he flew over Wilmington and Jacksonville along with the Coast Guard. The governor is warning people everywhere across the state, frankly, to be vigilant and never ever to drive through any sort of standing water. Also, be ready to leave their homes if flooding happens near them. Well, it looks like slick roads from Florence are to blame for a truck fire for a fire truck that flipped over in Archdale. This happened on Highway 62 just before two in the afternoon. Emergency responders on scene say firefighters from the Gill Rand Fire Department were responding when an emergency truck ended up coming in with the call here. The truck flipped over while trying to go around a curve. Luckily, no one was injured. Crews responding to the severe flooding in Union County came across this scene, a white pickup sliding off the road, crashing into a tree and then bursting into flames. Witnesses ended up pulling the driver through the truck's window and carried him away from the scene. We are told the man did injure his leg, but eventually should be OK. In Wilmington, part of I-40 washed away by Florence. This is at mile marker 420. The North Carolina Department of Transportation tweeted these pictures earlier today. Scary scene in Wilmington and one we've seen time and again in nearby Lumberton. Here's a look at a flooded hotel along I-95. CNN Air shot this footage earlier today as several communities look to remain underwater for the time being. One area hit particularly hard by flooding from Hurricane Matthew is now bracing for a repeat from the remnants of Florence. Our Janae Lewis takes us to Kinston, North Carolina, where the entire city is on high alert this evening. There is a sense of urgency tonight amongst Kinston city leaders as well as people who live here in concern for flooding along the Noose River. It's already in a major flood stage expected to crest Friday at 25 feet. The record was set two years ago in Hurricane Matthew when the river crested at 28 feet and people are certainly hoping not to see those kinds of numbers again, but people are coming together and answering the call to help out. We ran into a fitness group from Greenville. They helped pack 300 sandbags today. They're also going into communities, removing trees and helping the elderly. The group trains daily to have the physical and mental strength to step in and help out in these kinds of situations. Nobody has to you know, deal with the tragedy. It doesn't have to exist. You know, we're not out there necessarily risking our lives. We're not doing live water rescues. We're not saving people from their houses, but we don't want to get to that point. There is a curfew currently in effect right now until 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. In addition, the police department says they don't want to see anyone out on the roads unless they absolutely have to be. Back to you. Today, thank you. North Carolina's 11th death from Hurricane Florence occurred this afternoon in the town of Dallas, North Carolina. That's in Gaston County. Authorities there tell us a tree fell on a mobile home this afternoon and split it in half, killing a three month old baby inside. They stress everyone needs to be on alert. You know, if you live close to trees and you go out and, you know, inspect your property, if you feel like a tree is going to fall, then, you know, move to some location that's safer. Uh, because this could be the end result. The child's mother was hospitalized but is now recovering from her physical injuries. In Charlotte, a number of trees are down, roads there flooded, and people have been seen riding their bikes through floodwaters trying to get through. Mudslides also a possibility with the threat of flash flooding later tonight. Power has been knocked out in several neighborhoods as well. 
Across the state, in fact, hundreds of thousands of people, more than half a million, do not have electricity at this hour. More than 530,000 at last check.